Thank you. I feel yeah. blessed. Yeah. You are, whether you're in this state or not. 100% of the time, the blessings never stop flowing. Most people block most of them, but they never stop flowing. Yeah. I feel better in my life. I feel blessed every day. <laughs> really? <laughs> Okay. <laughs> what you mean is, I want to feel blessed every day, and when I don't, my voice squeaks like this. <laughs> you know that blessings are abounding, and you're reaching for blessings every day. So, what do you want to talk with us about? Okay. I finally got into your vortex that you've been talking about all this time, sometime December, January. And when I stepped into it, it was the greatest moment and I just saw everything come together and it kept coming and kept coming. And then I was in that moment of, okay, I'm in it. And now I'm doing the work of being in it. And so are you talking about, you found the vibrational frequency of your vortex. And then because you were outside the box vibrationally, everything that you wanted began to flow into your experience. Are you speaking of actual physical manifestations and demonstrations of alignment? Yes. Tell us about those. Okay. Um, well, I always heard you talk about the vortex and I was like, what is this vortex and how do I get into it? Well, that's not what we just asked you. We asked you to tell us about those manifestations because we all understand that part. Okay. Once I received them, well, or what they look like. So, <laughs> what it feels like as it's happening is a good discussion. The feeling of everything just working out for you is part of that discussion. The surprise and delight that things that looked like they weren't going to work worked and things that looked like they were a no became a yes. Those kinds of things. What did you mean? You gave us a very big build up. Now tell us what the buildup was about you found the vortex where everything you want is you got into the vortex where all of this stuff was you got tuned to the vortex and then what happened and then a lot of abundance came in financial my business was growing. so that's what we want to hear that's yes. what we want to hear i so, felt love every day I we felt know blah universe. blah blah yeah, we get blah, all blah, of that blah. okay want to hear this manifestation point because that's what everybody's looking for okay. in other words we can talk all day long about oh here you are in your body you're an extension of source energy you know what you don't want you know what you do want when you know what you don't want you launch a rocket of desire into your vortex about what you do want the vortex is gestating and law of attraction is gathering it up and your inner being is over there focused on what you want and calling it and gathering up all the cooperative components and then you are meditating and letting your vibration rise and finding yourself off in the vortex and now that you are the same vibrational frequency of what's in your vortex now those things that you've been asking for are showing themselves to you in these ways what ways um, financial abundance but be specific okay. about it um, my business grew and I was booked for over a month and a half out and um, I just love was coming to me in many different ways. I just, I felt it for myself and my child. But you're using past tense words. Because. Oh. No, okay, no. <laughs> okay. Okay. That's what we're talking about. And that's why I'm here today. Well, you're not going to get anything from us about any okay. of that because you can't get to where you want to be by talking about why it stopped. We want to talk about what it felt like while it was flowing. Okay. What kinds of things led to that? What did it feel like? Even the most mundane things. It was just a knowing that I had it all. It was a knowing that everything was available so to it's me. that feeling of empowerment and anticipation that feeling of being on the brink of manifestation now that's the feeling that you want to reconstitute within you that you want to recall because that's that feeling that lets it in see what we want you to hear what we want you all to hear is that all of you have these vortices that are ready to yield to you right there ready to burst onto your manifested scene where you can see it and hear it and 
and smell it and taste it and touch it. But you've got to hold yourself in that frequency so that you can be the receiver of it. And a lot of people hold themselves sort of in a limbo state for years and years and years and years and years because they felt it, but then. But they felt it, but then. But they felt it, but then. You got to stop the muddying of the water part of it. You got to stay true to the frequency that you knew was it and that yielded to you while you were there. That's the knowledge that you have that we most want to come out into the open where everyone can witness it. You knew it when you were doing it and you know it when you're not doing it. And now you're here to talk to us about why you're not doing it. And you're the only one who knows why you're not doing it. And we would say to you, the reason you're not doing it is because you're not milking the feeling of it enough and maybe not understanding that that's the work that's the work holding yourself on that pitch of letting it in and not giving way you see we get it it's complicated because everybody you know wants prosperity and when you start letting it in those that haven't figured out how to let it in yet are kind of standing around watching you and not all that happy about it. Do you know what most humans who have achieved success about anything do when they achieve success and then others say, how do you do it? They tell the absolute opposite story of how they got it. They talk about their struggle. They talk about their sacrifice. They talk about how hard it was. And that is not what let it in that might have been the catalyst that put the good stuff in the vortex to begin with but that's not what they were doing when the abundance started showing up in their experience esther went with a friend the other day she has an apartment in california and she rented another one to use as an office in a studio so that she could do the abraham now seminars from there as well as from texas and she needed some furniture and had dabbled around with it a little bit and she was off with a friend one day they were running around and all of a sudden it hit both of them at the same time it was manifestation time and Esther said can you feel it her friend said yes they've been there on more than one occasion and so they just sort of followed their feeling into a place into a showroom that had so many beautiful things all of the things that Esther wanted and she said that and 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 that oh and that and that and that and that and that then she said to the man so if I want these things do I have to order them or can I just have these and he said you have to order them and she said but I want that and 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 you see it's all right here it's all right here can I have that and he said I can make that happen and Esther and her friend looked at each other like can you feel how powerful we are <laughs> But the most interesting thing was they could feel it before it happened. They could feel how powerful they were when they walked in the door. When they walked in the door, there was no question. In, now, we know this is just stupid stuff. This is just gathering up furniture that already exists. But it's a big city. And finding that much that Esther wanted all in one place and available, oh, it took their breath away. It was almost as good as world peace. <laughs> we're not mocking that because you can do that too. So then they went back to the apartment complex. Now, there's where it gets a little dicey. There's a potential to muddy the water here because it's a big old place and there's a loading dock and there are other people that want to use it and there's a freight elevator and all of that, but they know they're on a roll. And when things have happened like this, this magical, they know this is going to be magical too. So they walk into the leasing office and they explain what we want and this very well-meaning, very obstinate, really horrible person, we don't know. Uh, <laughs> manager when they said we have some furniture that's going to be delivered tomorrow and they're just all bright eyed and bushy tailed and she goes and Esther said and she said and she said the office is going to be closed tomorrow we're taking everyone on a holiday and Esther's thinking you're taking everyone on a holiday with all of us here that might need you for something now can you feel Esther muddying up her water just a little bit she looks at her friend and he's going like, don't go there, don't go there, don't go there. And so, I said, all right then, because there are four elevators in this place, and the freight elevator is not any bigger than the other elevators. It just goes out to the loading dock. And Esther's thinking, no problem, no one will be here. <laughs> and we'll just come in and use the other elevators, and no one will care. And so, she left all happy with her friend, who was also happy. And they're... <laughs> 
going to be really easy. We can use all four elevators and we'll just come right in the front door and off we go. And then later in the day, she got a phone call. The freight elevator had been held for them. And someone was going to be there with a code and a key. And Esther wondered why it took them so long to figure it out. Actually. <laughs> now, some could call it obnoxious, arrogant, spoiled. You could call it sure. You could call it practiced. Esther's not like that all the time. But when the seas are parting, she can feel it. And she knew that the seas had parted so far already that this was not going to be something that was going to bog it down. And because she was limited in time in the sense that one day and then off she is out here to see all of you. In other words, she knew that next week something else and the week after that something else. In other words, she had carved out a narrow window for herself and the universe had accommodated her and there was no reason that everyone in the equation could not accommodate her. That's how you want to feel. Now, would Esther have the ability to do something else? Can she cope? Yes. But we are not encouraging you to be copers with what is. We're encouraging you to be creators of what you desire. And we know this is frivolous. This is furniture. This can't be that important. But your manifestations are important to you. And the way you feel is important to you. And when you practice that feeling with things that are like furniture, you can practice it with other things that you put on a plane of higher importance. You see what we're getting at? Yes. In this very moment, I have now come back to the complete awareness yeah. that I can manifest everything just the way I manifest. Because this. we demonstrated Esther's bag of marbles and activated in your bag of marbles. And so now you're right on the same marble page. In other words, now these are no longer just words that we're offering to you. You have that knowing. You're yes. back on that track, yes. you see. Your point of attraction now is back. You're back, yes. baby. That's <laughs> what it is. The magic is there. And you can tell when it's there and you can tell when it's not there. And your work is singular. Get it there. In whatever way you can get it there, get it there. Whatever it takes. Good? Thank you. I appreciate you. Really good. So what do you think about that? All of you have had experiences like that, haven't you? Where you can just feel, you just know it's going to go. When you said, I'm not going to take no for an answer, you're not being stubborn and spoiled. It's that you can feel that the universe is yielding to you and this is the most important point that we want to make it's time to put your foot on the gas you don't put your foot on the gas when things are not going good you don't throw a fit when things aren't going well you don't become demanding you are expecting you are eagerly expecting the universe to yield to you and why because you've practiced the feeling of worthiness and you've practiced the feeling of things working out for you and you understand the laws of the universe and you know that things can work out or not and you've seen it go both ways and this is the way you're choosing for it to be and this is what you're practicing on a more regular basis so more and more and more people who are watching you are wondering what is your magic and you want to say to them it's not magic it's calculated expectation I've practiced myself into expecting things to go my way but you don't want to go too far into a discussion with someone who really doesn't get it because they might muddy your water they might have a reasonable case to make about why you shouldn't be the special one that gets everything you want but they don't know they don't know Esther's really big about fairness and it took us a long time, still she's not all the way in our corner on this, to realize that the law of attraction is always fair. It's always fair. Because nobody lets in something that they are in vibrational opposition to. Yeah. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe. We'll see you in the next video.